got back. Y'all haven't seen him in a while, but he is back with us. We were supposed to have another guest, but he got to cover hockey, so he's all the way in Franklin. But Joe, Joey is here. Hey, shout out to Mark for making that drive to Franklin. I, I drove there once. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's good to be back. Tournament time, and Mark is Mark Aboyan, item writer, is covering St. Mary's hockey um, at six o'clock. So he was going to be here, but. He apologizes. No, I mean, yeah, he had to leave at like 2 o'clock just to beat the traffic. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. No? But he'll do a great job. Uh, yeah, we got to talk about last night's game. Um, oh, my gosh. As you can see, I have, well, I got to flip my hat around, show solidarity with my team, with my boys. But, wow, that's all I have to say right now. Wow. 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 Yes, that was, uh, I, I don't like to use the word heartbreaker a lot, but that's what it was. Oh, my gosh. Um, a great high school basketball game, though. Yes. You finish in your top 25 in Division One. You go 16-6. and six. There are a lot of positives to take out. Yeah. So, um, not the ending they wanted, not the ending maybe we wanted. We were there. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's why you play the game. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not like Marshfield was a, a joke team or anything like that. They're well coached, and uh, they play hard. They played hard early on, and this kind of set set an early tone. And then I don't even know what happened from there. It's kind of like ten, from that from the first couple minutes of the game, they went ten two. You could just see the athleticism and the quickness of English was giving them issues. And then I have no idea what happened after that, because after that, that was I think that was that early on in the game. That was the only time they played defense. I think that that first couple minutes of the game, that was the only time they played defense. And then after that, I have no idea what what was even going on. I'm going to applaud the coaching on both sides. Oh, yeah. Because I think Alvin Abro with English did a great job of doing what they do best. They, they like to run the floor. They like to get it down low. Mm -hmm. And I thought they were able to do that. They scored 99 points. Yeah. They lost 100 to 99. And it was really one of those games in which you just, whoever has the ball last kind of, is put in a better position because mm -hmm. I think if English had a full possession late, they might have capitalized, but also Bob Fisher, he's made um, the state tournament for 43 straight years. That's no coincidence in uh, Quincy, Rockport, and now Marshfield. So he kept his guys really focused and looking forward. So um, good coaching on both sides, I thought. Let me just, I wrote this down, so I wrote, I wrote it down last night. So for the audience, I wrote this on my Facebook page. So the last... 35 seconds of the game. It's like the last 30, 35 seconds. This is this is what happened in the last 30, 35 seconds. The score is 88, 82, Lynn English with the lead. They get a defensive stop. They throw it away, turn it over. Matt Elwood, who was killing them all night from the three, walks right into a three-pointer, knocks it down. 88, 85. The clock is ticking, clock is ticking. The inbound pass. Terrible inbound pass. It gets deflected. Marshfield gets it, gets the layup, 88-87, clock is ticking, clock is ticking. English actually inbound the ball with no issues. They get Carmelo goes to the line, he goes one of two. They call an egregious offensive foul on Kyle, which I thought the defender, I thought the player flopped on that one. Well, Kyle grabbed the offensive rebound, but so here comes, here comes Marshfield, somebody stop ball. You know, find your man, find your man. Two guys converge on the def on the player. I believe his name it was Giovanni Josephs at the top. He finds, I, I forgot who he found down low. Jake Brilliant, he finds Jake Brilliant down low. We are tied up at 89 apiece to end regulation. And that was just the last 30 seconds of the game. You're up six, they need to foul you, and two turnovers, and miss free throws. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how you lose ball games. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, well, it was it was a very high intense, mm. high emotion game. And sometimes I don't I don't know whether it was a matter of, of execution or just um, maybe some some pressure, but I I thought. English played a strong game, which is why it was it was frustrating. On yeah, it, it was. Mar I, Marshfield, they Marshfield didn't turn the ball over late. They made they made all the key plays they needed to make because the English was pulling away and they just kept steadily, steadily staying, staying there, staying there, staying there to make a run. And then you know, 
once again, the turnover was late. And this has been an issue. English had a lot of bad habits early that I thought they got, I thought they fixed from the, um, after that Everett loss where they gave that away. They gave that game away late in the game. Uh, the St. Mary's loss, they gave that game away late in the game again with the lead in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think Springfield Central at the Spartan Classic had a lead late, gave that away. So these are just bad habits that they had. I, I, so it kind of came back to bite them. And from my point of view, you know, we've, lo we've watched a lot of basketball this winter, and Marshfield was one of the more confident teams I've watched. Because mm -hmm. you got to remember, the game started 10 to 2 in enemy territory. They yeah. were not playing great to start the game, yeah. and they had a lot of bad misses mm -hmm. and a lot of turnovers. They allowed a lot of offensive rebounds. So the fact that they were able to really grind away at that lead as the game went on mm -hmm. and take those big shots and, and make those big shots late, credit to them. Uh, yeah, I think his name was Jack, Jack Malloy, or yeah. Joe, Joe Malloy, Jack Malloy. I'm sorry, sorry if I forgot your name. Um, Malloy was his last name, though. I talked to him post game. I talked to so many people. Uh, he basically said, "This is the best they've ever played since he's been there." Hmm. That's that, that, that's what he said. And great time to put out your best performance. <laughs> Quite the time, head coach. I mean, he he was losing his mind. He was just filled with emotions after the game. This this was just a team that you know that they, they was they knew they had a tough the tough uh, tough matchup. But yeah, it was, you just saw the joy from the team that just pulled off a big win on the road for them. So off to Andover they go over this Friday. <laughs> yeah, and I know English wants to play in that game, and, and you know they're not, but. People are going to say I'm going to sound too confident, too optimistic here, but don't change anything that they're doing. I like English's play style. I like their culture. They do a lot of things well, and they're a very well-respected program in Massachusetts. And they're going to be back next year. Yeah, they're going to be back. They'll be fine. They just, you know, sometimes the players have to look at themselves. You have to look at themselves because a coach can do only so much. A coach can say and do only so much. When you lose games off Discipline, being undisciplined, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and, you know, just fix that. You, for the for the sophomore, for the f sophomores and juniors that are going to be back on the team next year, they just have to look at themselves in the mirror, uh, review this game, and just look at what they didn't do and and sh fix that. And hopefully, you come next year, you come with a better mindset, go uh, to pr to put yourself in a better position so you can win a game like this. Because I mean, hey. It's win or go home, so, you know. <laughs> Another thing about Marshfield that was looking at its roster, 15 of 17 15 seniors, yeah. players are seniors. Yeah. That's, I, I mentioned in my article, I thought they were very mature. Yeah. To go down in a place like that. Yeah, definitely. And come back. Definitely. Um, you credit, can't, credit to both teams. You can't beat the senior experience. You can't beat that, having, yeah. having a lot of seniors on your team. Uh, we got we got some other matchups. Kip Academy, they they pulled one off. It was the, wasn't the offensive game that we saw Thursday, but Kip pulled it off. They did it did offensively and defensively. It felt like their athletic, their speed, their speed was the big factor against Wittensville Christian because it was Wittensville Christian couldn't handle that pressure, the full court pressure. Kip forced a lot of turnovers, and you know those guys last year, similar situation. They won, they won at home, and then went on the road, they lost by one. So they said hopefully they learned from last year and try to do the stuff that they didn't do last year so they could, because uh, they're going on the road to Clinton, which is only an hour away. So we'll see. So when it comes to Clinton, I'm not going to act like I know the X's and O's of yeah, that team, because there are probably other analysts, other reporters who can yeah. speak uh, on them. But I will say for Kip and Coach Moody Bay and company, be yourself. Uh, what do I mean by that? Two things. I think the first one is uh, run, play, energize. That's what Kip does. Second of all, know your role. I've yeah. talked to Moody a few times the last few weeks, and he's told me, you know, he has guys on his team where they're like, my role here is to be the facilitator, primary ball handler. I'm not yeah. going to try to overextend. Yeah. And then he has another player, Caleb Bjor, and they've talked, and it just says, be the best athlete on the court tonight. So if you be yourself and you run and you don't get intimidated on the road, I think yeah. Kip has a, a good shot. And making free throws, too. Yeah, making free throws. Always free helps. throws on the road, 
especially on the road, you have to make your free throws because that's like the margin of error is so small and you know things like that. You gotta you gotta make your free throws. So yeah, we need we need them to pull it off. I'm, I'm rooting for them. Uh, we got some games today and tomorrow and Friday. Lynn, Lynn Tech is going to Upper Cape to, I mean, that's that's probably starting in, at 6 o'clock. Is it 6 o'clock? The girls, yeah. It's 6 o'clock starting to Upper Cape. I think this is there. I don't know. If, uh, did they make this tournament last year? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, they did? I, I know they were competitive in the Vogue. And, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't remember if they did, but. It's it's gonna be a hard task just to travel, just to travel wise. I don't want to get to the game. This should be fine because you got players like Allison Morales, Angelis Bingham, who those two players have been filling up the stat sheet all season long. So that's the key right there for them, especially on the road. They're gonna need they're gonna need really really big games from those two players if they want to get that play, tournament win. Yeah, love what love what Caitlin has done with that program. Yeah, they're a lot of fun to watch. They play team basketball and they hustle. Um, I hate to use the word inspired, but I think they play inspired defense mm -hmm. at Lintec, boys and girls. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a tough, tough road trip, though. Yeah. When it comes to getting off the bus, you know, sometimes the last thing you want to do is play a two-hour game. Yeah. But um, they're going to be locked in. There's no doubt in my mind. Now it's just a matter of execution. Yeah, yeah. and then we got St. Mary's girls. They're, they're one of the favorites in Division Three. That, that Division Three is kind of loaded with teams. Kind of, it's kind of up in the air for who's going to win that mm -hmm. one for this season. But St. Mary's girls, they've been, they've been battle tested. They've played some tough games this year. A lot of close games that that's come down to the wire. Got got good enough experience with Bella, AJ, Reese. Uh, some of the players were on the team, but they didn't get minutes because of some of the plays they had last year. But they got they got players that know. That, that know the tournament experience, or I'd say they know the tournament and how you're supposed to play in the tournament. So um, they're going to be a tough out. They're definitely going to be a tough out this season, especially with the star Bre Bella at the helm for the, uh, for the Spartans. Like what I said about Kip, um, play your game. Don't change too much. But I also want to say for St. Mary's, just trust each other. That's yeah. what I would say. And they've done that recently. You look at Bella. She's someone who, as an eighth grader, got offers from BC and URI. She's yeah. the real deal. But she... They had a, dra a play drawn up last week in the Spartan Classic for uh, Jillian Roberts, who executed. Yeah. Everyone thought Bella was going to get the ball. Yeah, she so became the decoy. She was totally good with that. Yeah. No ego or anything, which I applaud her and, and Jeff and everybody on that play. That's why they won. So just keep trusting each other. They've got the stars. They've got the depth. Yeah, the, that's the what coach. I mean. Yeah, the depth right there. The depth is going to be really key. Because during the season, a lot of those girls were in the rotation. They, a lot of them were in and out. The, and a lot of them had moments in the season where they were the key piece to winning a game, a key contributor to winning a game. So that definitely will help in the, in the long run. So, yeah, that, that team... And they got another eighth grader, Charlie Green. Mm -hmm. She's been, she has been having a good season. She's had a good, a good first year on varsity for them uh, coming off the bench. So, ooh, tough out. It's gonna be a tough. I'll out. be there. You'll be there. I'll be at St. Mary's. Yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll be somewhere else. <laughs> I'll be in Texas. Uh, the boys, on the other hand, the boys, they lost a lot of experience, but these, these young guys. This is going to be their first, uh, some of them, this is, well, most of them, minus JJ and probably Donnell. Donnell, a lot of them, this is going to be their first major, major playing time in the state tournament. So I think I, they're well, they are, they are a well-coached team, so they should be fine. It's just, you know, just handling the, the we got to watch like the first couple minutes, like, you know, because sometimes those nerves and a little anxious because it's, it's your first time in the tournament. One player I'm not worried about is, is Jake oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fortier when it comes to confidence. He is one of the more confident shooters on the North Shore. Um, I've seen him in environments like at Bishop Fenwick this season. Mm -hmm. He was lights out. I think must have been five or six threes that night. Uh, he'll be confident. And Coach David Brown has told me that he thinks J.J. Martinez is one of the best players to ever play at St. Mary's. Or, or, or will be. And so trust him and, and, and play your game and um, don't don't rely on him too much. You never want to rely on a star player too much, but yeah. um, I think they're in a good position. Yeah, to I, win think, I think those other guys, are like as the season went on, you kind of saw the offense opening up and other guys getting started, becoming more productive offensively because the first couple games it was J.J. getting the points to create and everything. Now it's more so they're doing collectively now, so he's not, he don't need to score 30 points 
each time for them to win. Now, now he could he could go out there and give you 16, 17 points, but he'll give you at least five assists, or five, six, seven assists, and he'll be he'll be big on the rebounds too. And then the the uh, the X factor is Kyle Rush. That is my X factor on that team. There's been games I went to where I've seen him make six threes, I've seen him make seven threes, I've seen him get hot from three. So his shooting, another one, he's, his shooting also will be key because once he gets hot, that offense starts with steamrolling. I see, I don't want to predict here, but I will. I see St. Mary's <laughs> coming out hot, relying on the crowd, and I think St. Mary's handles business. Um, I know this. I know in football we more predict, yeah. but I'm gonna say St. Mary's gets the job. Yeah, I don't even know who they're playing. To be honest with you, I forgot the team name. <laughs> I, I, I forgot. There, so many teams. I just can't keep. I should have wrote it down. But they they have a home game, so you know, they'll, they'll be they'll. I think I think they've lost one home game this season. And classical did fall. Yeah, classical fell. Yeah, classical fell on the road to Foxborough. Uh, I have an issue with the state to, with the with this ranking system. I have a big issue with it. Are we talking about that? Yeah, I gotta get this off my chest. I cause I've been going back and forth with it. Teams, I will say this once and I'll say it again. Teams that don't have a 500 record should not be in the state tournament. Teams with losing records should not be in the state tournament. I remember when I was in high school. You had to win 10 games to be eligible for the state tournament. Now it's nine games, apparently. And now I'm seeing teams with five wins. I'm seeing teams with six wins. I'm seeing teams with seven wins get in the tournament and get, in the home, get a home game. And everybody's just like, well, they play tougher competition, so they deserve to be at their strength of schedule. And what good is a strength of schedule if you can't beat the good teams that you schedule to play? Hmm. It's rewarding losing. That's what it is. I've been arguing with people about this all week. But then, you know, they're using, well, you see what happened to the, all the GBL teams they lost in the, in the tournament, so they're not that good. I'm like, that's not my point. My point is, is, is teams that don't have good winning rec a good record are in the tournament. Like, St. John's Prep was like 5-17. and 17. How is that a tournament team? So you're saying even if there's elite competition, if they don't win, it doesn't? That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. If you don't win, Doesn't it don't matter. matter. Okay. Like, what good? Is, what good is it if you're playing the good teams and you're not beating them? And they're not. It's not even close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not the only one who who thinks that. I know it's a very. I don't want to say. Do I say divisive? The MIA ranking system, but mm -hmm. um, I think at the end of the day, once you're in there, once it's game time and you're mm -hmm. at the facility, you got to just. You know, you're playing who you're playing and, and go from there. But in terms of the conversation, yeah, it's a it's a passionate topic for sure. Very, very. I'm great, hey, man. We talk, these people, these are the same folks that talk about everybody gets a participation trophy, but it's like now everybody's getting in the tournament, no matter what their record <laughs> is. Next year, we might see teams of one win get in the tournament <laughs> just because they played a tough schedule or their power ranking. It was great. Uh, we can't we can't forget about Lynn Tech, vocational, te vo vocational champs. Good way for them to kick off their to state tournament run. I, I mean, the momentum they had to go into the state tournament. That game against Shawshank Tech was one of the one of the best games I've seen in a while. Packed house at that at that um, at Lynn Tech Field House. Uh, great environment, and they're gonna host a game. This they're gonna host. They might be able to host two games, but it's gonna be it's gonna be packed in there. The people will show up for that, and students don't have to pay for their games to go to go in the games over there. So. Talk about a strong environment, yeah. Lynn Tech. That's the place to be. Yeah. Um, my God, that's a Friday night too. It's a Friday so, game. So um, Mark will be at that game. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Lynn Tech, man. They uh, they play motivated. They play uh, inspiring defense. And I will say, they've got two very versatile guards, and they've got your big man and Edric. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, Edric. Oh man, he's a man. Yeah. item player of the week this week. Each, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, feel, I'm doing my, uh, my awards and this MVP, this MVP, there's three players I have and woo, it's a tight one. It's a tight one. I can't reveal it yet, but it's a tight one. And when it comes to the place to play, that that really matters this time of year. Yeah, you don't want to be a road team going into a place like Lynn Tech, of, you know. It's not a small gym. It's not one of those where it's yeah. like so small, where right, it's right, loud. Right. It's it's a 
it's a really strong yeah. environment, and it, yeah. it matters when you have to play at Lynn Tech. Yeah, and the core and the and the core of that team, they've been together now for for the past two years, so they they've kind of gel, and I think they've learned from last year's state tournament loss to the Tewksbury, I believe it was. So, yeah, I like this team. I like I like this team. <laughs> I just they got like, the star power. Yeah, they got everything. They got everything. And but their division, that bracket, that division four bracket, there are there are like six or seven teams in that division that's that's probably got a chance at winning it all. That including the defending champs wear him. So but yeah, that's if folks wanna know which division to look at for these to state tournaments, look at that one because there's that was probably gonna be the most entertaining to, entertaining and I, division. And I wanna give credit to Coach Bingham. Coach Corey Bingham and yeah. another thing David Brown, who's actually cousins with Corey, has told me is that he doesn't know if there's been a coach to transform a program in two years as quickly and as effectively as, as Corey has. They've really, um, you know, in not a lot of time have been a, not only a successful program, but a very entertaining program. And yeah. it's a blast to cover them, for they sure. Got the, they got the kids, too. They got the kids. I mean, it was such a drastic jump after year one. Year one, still getting things together. Then last year, they just... They got they got the freshmen and then everything took off when they when they got that group of freshmen in there. So, man, we we got some teams still still going. Hopefully, you know, hopefully they continue they continue on and play play next week. It's survive in advance at this point, man. You don't want to go home. No. You don't want to go home and you don't want the feeling of what happened last night. Seeing man, seeing those kids' faces last night after the game, man. So I'm glad I'm not a coach. Yeah. You're having to console some young men after a tough loss. Ooh, that's tough. Ooh, that's tough. Very tough. And we've had uh, we've had 27 readership teams make the state tournament. After two days, we're down to 20. So um, a big hockey night tonight, and uh, hopefully some more programs stay in there. Yeah, yeah, we, we're hoping. We're wishing them all well. Good luck in, in the state tournament because, yeah, baseball and all that other stuff is coming up in a couple weeks too. So we got swing sports is coming up soon. Um, ah man, uh, make sure you check out Joey's articles. Check out the story he got on Lynn English from last night. It's up on the it's up on the website, right? Amlab.com, yep. uh, sports section, and it's all there. Yeah, and then we'll, the, after the results of today, tomorrow, and Friday, we'll we'll be back next week and talk about all that. Hopefully, we get Mark here. Yeah, hopefully. He's going to try. Yeah. Hey, man, I don't blame him. But, my man, appreciate it. Thank you so always. much for having me. Yeah, we are out of here. Yeah, man.